excited for you guys to be here with us today. We are going to be telling the resurrection story through cookies. We're going to do a tutorial today on how you can do these cookies at home um, while you learn about the resurrection story. All right, so what you're going to need to make your resurrection cookies is you're going to need a cup of whole pecans, a teaspoon of vinegar, three egg whites, a pinch of salt, a cup of sugar, a Ziploc bag, a wooden spoon, wax paper, a Bible, and some tape. So the first thing that you are going to need is your pecans. And you're going to put them in a Ziploc bag. So after Jesus was arrested, he was beaten by the Roman soldiers. And you'll open up your Bible to John 19, 1 through 3, where it says, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers also twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and threw a purple robe around him. And they repeatedly came up to him and said, Hail, the King of the Jews, and were slapping his face. And so what you'll do is you'll take your bag of cons, and you're going to beat it with a wooden spoon to small pieces. Once you have done that, Jesus was thirsty on the cross. Instead of water to drink, he was given vinegar. The scripture that goes with this part is from John 19, 28 through 30. After this, when Jesus knew that everything was now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar full of vinegar was sitting there, so they fixed a sponge full of vinegar on hyssop and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. I want you, before you put a teaspoon of vinegar into your bowl, I want you to smell it. And can you imagine drinking that when you are thirsty? Do you know why we associate eggs with Easter? Why? Eggs represent life, and Jesus gave his life to give us life. First, uh, John 10, 10 through 11 says, A thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come so that may, they may have life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So then you're going to add your three egg whites. To your mixing bowl with the vinegar in it. The next part of the story tells us that the salt represents the salty tears that were shed by Jesus's followers and the bitterness of our own sin. From Luke chapter 23 verse 27 says, a large crowd of people followed him including women who were weeping and mourning him. We're going to add a pinch of salt to our bowl. So, so far, Christy, we've got egg whites, mm. salt, and vinegar. Mm. Does that look yummy? Not really. Have you ever made cookies that looked like this? No, usually mm. there's some kind of sweet some sugar something, something involved in it well 
Jesus dying on the cross is a sad story. But the sweet part of the story is that Jesus died because he loves us. He wants us to know and belong to him. Psalm 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the man who takes protection in him. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world in his way, he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. So we're going to add one cup of sugar to our mixing bowl. And then next, we're going to beat the ingredients with a mixer on high speed for 12 to 15 minutes until stiff peaks are formed. Mix your ingredients until stiff peaks form, and that means when you pick up the beaters, it creates stiff peaks like this. It takes about 12 to 15 minutes or so. That's right. All right, so what color is our mixture now? It's white. The color white represents the purity in God's eyes of those whose sins have been cleansed by Jesus. Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come, let us discuss this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they will be like wool. So next, you're going to take your now broken pieces of pecans, and you're going to pour them in. And you're going to fold them. And that means you just scoop from the sides and bring it to the middle. Well, and then you got to all fold it in. You're going to take a teaspoon and you're going to make mounds onto your wax paper covered cookie sheet. And each mound represents the rocky tomb where Jesus' body was laid. Matthew 27, 57 through 60 says, When it was evening, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph came, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. He approached Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then Pilate ordered that it be released. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in clean, fine linen, and placed it in his new tomb, which he had cut into the rock. He left after rolling a great stone against the entrance of the tomb. And when you have all your mounds made, you're going to set your oven to 300 degrees. And when it's re reached full temperature, you're going to put the cookies in, you're going to seal the oven door shut with a piece of tape. You're going to seal the oven door shut with a piece of tape, just like Jesus' tomb was sealed. Matthew 27, 65 through 66 says, You have a guard of soldiers, Pilate told them. Go and make it as secure as you know how. Then they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting the guard. After you have placed the, the cookies in the oven at 300 degrees and placed the tape over, you're going to turn the oven off. And now you may feel sad that you have to leave the cookies. Jesus' followers were in despair when the tomb was sealed. John 16, 20 and 22 says, I assure you, you will weep and wail, but the world will rejoice. You will become sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. So you also have sorrow now, but I will see you again, 
your hearts will rejoice and no one will rob you of your joy. Your cookies will not be ready until Easter morning. And we have a fresh batch over here, don't we, Christy? We do. On Easter morning, you'll get one of the cookies and you'll notice that the cookie is cracked. And when you take a bite of the cookie, it will be hollow inside. On the first Easter, Jesus' followers were amazed to find the tomb open and empty. Matthew 28 verses 1 through 9 says, After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning and his robe was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken from fear of him that they became like dead men. But the angel told the woman, don't be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. For he has been resurrected, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. In fact, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you. So departing quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, they ran to tell his disciples the news. Just then, Jesus met them and said, Good morning. They came up, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus told them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. So during this Easter season, as we all tell each other, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this, and we hope you have a blessed Easter. Stay safe and stay healthy.